Hello guys, it's been a while since we've had one of these reflections, but I think it's time because I got quite the story today. I was talking to my roommate, he's actually sitting back there. I mentioned that in college, I once took part in this kind of singing competition. It wasn't something like American Idol or something like that, it was a Chinese thing. What happened was, 2008, Beijing had the Olympics, and for those of you who understand economics, you know that most of the time when you do a lot of public expenditure, as in build a lot of public works. You build something like a big stadium. Basically, I'm talking about the bird's nest and all that stuff. You build it for a big occasion. Afterwards, it kind of doesn't find a use. The marketplace never demanded it. A lot of that stuff they built for the Olympics kind of sits there nowadays more as a tourist destination than anything else. There's no practical use for a lot of that stuff. They came up with this water cube competition. They were trying to use it for all the people who left China and now they have kids, so their kids might be 1.5 generation or even second generation or third generation, get these people of Chinese descent to kind of like come back to China, do something cool, learn about Chinese culture, love China. You know, it's like a very classic soft power type of move. Trip was going to be sponsored and everything, and then you would have a singing competition in the bird's nest, that big building, that big Olympic building. I don't know how my parents found out about this. I believe it was on the local newspapers. The Washington DC area where my parents were, there's a lot of Chinese Americans, Chinese people, Chinese Americans, etc. It's not like we planned on winning or we were preparing to go to China and like win a singing comedy. We we're just like, this is cool. It was one summer I was just doing an internship I wasn't enjoying and my parents were trying to, to their credit, trying to help me find creative outlets. So my mom saw it in the newspaper. She's like, dude, let's go to this. I'm like, Sure, why not? I hadn't taken any singing lessons at all. I just like to sing in the shower and sing with my friends. And I was playing the guitar on the side. We decided for the first time ever try to sing and play guitar. Gonna be quite the experience, right? Because I had never sang and played guitar before. The day of the competition, we don't know how many people are gonna be there. We don't know what kind of people are gonna be there. And so I'm there and I think there were about 20 people. It was quite an interesting crowd. All the girls there, super cute Chinese girls, and they were all super serious. You could tell all of them were dressed up. They had different clothes and everything. Most of them had either taken dance lessons or singing lessons. All the guys were basically just kind of like me, just like, oh, this is cool. You know, our parents told us about this. Let's just kind of do this. So basically how it worked was you had to prepare two songs. Then you sang one song, they would eliminate down to, I think, eight people. So out of the 20, they would eliminate down to eight people. And then they would do the final Next round, it's like the eight of you going to the final round. I prepared two songs. Again, I had never performed them on stage. I just sometimes would sing them. So I had no idea how I would sing it. I think I was the first one up too, which was really freaking scary. I was the first one up and I went up there and I sang this like rock song. It was really funny, like. I don't think I have a voice built for rock, but I just sang and I felt like I wasn't doing well. So I just kind of like kept strumming the guitar and then I just re-sang the song again. The second time I just started yelling the song. It's such a rock song. And I remember there were three judges and some, they were all musicians or whatever, whatever qualifications. And they're like, you know, you got the heart of this rock song, man. This is a famous Chinese rock song. You did a good job. And I was like, oh, okay. All right, that's cool. So I guess I did well, even though I thought I did really bad. And I listened to the tape afterwards and I still thought I did bad, but everyone who I showed it to was like, no, you did okay. This is not the point of the story. The point of the story is out of the female contestants, one girl. And before I talk about her, let me explain to you that this competition was limited to 14, 12 or 14 was the cutoff for the low end to, to something like 30 
or 25 or something like that. So it was trying to find youth, right? Basically, people before their brains were completely formed. So you know, if you bring them to China, you could kind of like impress their brains and like change their thought patterns or plant things. I was in college at the time, so I was like 20. I was barely 21. There was one girl there who didn't look like she was even 10. And in the back of my mind, I was like, it's just how a lot of us Asians are. We're neotenous. You know, we, we look younger than our ages. All the other contestants went up and started singing one really funny dude. He sang like the most patriotic communist song. It was a song about the Korean War, about a Chinese soldier took a bomb and jumped into a bunch of Americans and blew them up. <laughs> so he sang a patriotic communist song. I mean, he couldn't sing, and he was really awkward, but we're like, you know, the fact that he sings that song, he obviously knew what his audience was. I'm sure if he sang it well, he would have won, but he didn't sing it well. But we were all like, oh, that guy, smart choice right there. This little girl goes up. She's singing, you know, Dun Li Jun, Teresa Dunn. Oh, sorry, no, no, not Teresa Dunn. She was singing, um, kind of like her contemporary. It was this lady that trended in China in like the 90s. <laughs> The song was supposed to be like a cute song, but she somehow sang it in a very sexual way, and that made me really uncomfortable, because then this little girl was, she was trying to act way older than her age. The first semi-final round, and all the people were eliminated. It was just me and one guy, and uh, six other girls made it to the final round. All the other guys, so all the other guys, and maybe one or two girls were eliminated, but the mo most of the people that were eliminated were the guys. I mean, it makes sense, right? If you want to do a competition and it might even be broadcast on Chinese television, of course you're gonna pick cute girls over regular awkward guys. Now it goes to the final round. I think I was picked first again to go up and this time I completely bombed the song. I was trying to sing a song that had like ethnic flair, but I'm from a barbaric part of China, but I'm like barbarically Chinese. I'm not like barbarically Mongolian or barbarically Tibetan. I thought I could do it well, you know, I thought I had that like barbaric flair, but I didn't have the right barbaric flair. So I was singing the song and it sounded so bad and one high note, I actually didn't even reach it and my voice cracked. I knew I failed and the judges tore me apart, man. They're like, wrong song choice. You need to work on your range. Like they went Simon on me if you're familiar with American Idol. So I said, okay, well, my chances are ruined. Most of those judges were rooting for me. They wanted me to win it. They were, they were, that's why they were so angry at me. They're like, dude, we had so much hope for you. You know, all the other girls went and this is when it started getting sketchy. Between those girls that went up there, there was a definite kind of difference in their quality, their level of singing but they all basically got the same score. We're so confused, what's going on? And then that girl that I thought looked really little went up there and she sang it. She bombed the song, man. She bombed the freaking song. The judges critiqued her, but they also gave her encouragement. And then she got the highest score out of all the girls that sang. So she ended up winning. When I first recorded this, I totally forgot that she wasn't the only winner. There actually was another winner that I forgot to even mention. That's how much of a lack of impression the girl gave me, but it was a girl. And this girl, she sang for her semi-final song, and then for her final song, she wasn't even singing. She was allowed to play the clarinet. So she didn't sing during the finals, and she still got the highest score. So it wasn't the girl that looked too young that got the highest score, she got the second highest score. The girl that got the highest score was this random girl dressed like she was going to a funeral or something and she was doing the clarinet. It was so weird because there was never something in the rules that said you can decide to not sing in your 
second song and actually just blow the clarinet. With these two things in mind, man, it just felt really weird and might I say rigged. So let's go back to my original recording. Of course, all the girls are kind of like angry. They're disappointed. They're like, what is going on? After the, the results were announced, one of the guys in our group, he formed a Facebook group. He's like, dude, let's all find each other. Let's all keep in touch and everything. So we were all keeping in touch and we were like talking on Facebook. Before all this happened, I talked to that little girl's father because her mother was super intense tiger mom. Like you can tell her mom wanted her to win more than she wanted to win. In fact, it felt like the whole time she was just trying to please her mom. Every time after she like finished singing, she would like come up here and like she would look at her mom and give her mom a huge hug. Oh, my mom's not going to yell at me tonight or my mom's not going to spank me tonight. Like that's the type of kid she was and I felt so bad for her. And on top of that, the majority of us were just having fun. We were rooting each other on. When it was the little girl's turn to sing both times, her mom literally yelled at us. She's like, shut up. It's her turn to sing. Stop distracting her. And we're like, lady, you're taking this way too seriously. You're taking this way too seriously. So like her mom was like that type of mom. You don't want to be at a party with her, in a bar with her. So her dad was pretty cool. In fact, her dad, after I bombed the second song, the dad talked to me. He's like, dude, you got such a good voice, man. Why don't you actually find a good song? Why don't you find a good song that you could sing so that way next time you win something like this? And he even gave me a song to try out. <laughs> And he could play guitar and sing it. He's like, look it up, man. It's gonna be really good for you. Because the dad was being really nice. Maybe the dad saw the mom kind of like being a jerk to all of us. Because the dad was being really nice. I said, well, it sounds like your daughter has had training, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's even been on Sesame Street. You can find a lot of stuff on her. 2011, YouTube still wasn't at the point it is now, right? 2011, YouTube was still in the growing phase. I went home. I looked up his daughter's name and I found this interview. She was probably like six or something at the time when she was interviewed. I'm forgetting about this, right? And then I go on Facebook one day and there's this big stare. There's this big kind of anger in some of the other people who competed in the competition. They're like, oh, guys, you know that uh, she's not even 12 yet. She's underage. And then someone else is like, yeah, dude, uh, we, we looked her up too. She's underage. Suddenly we're like, what? What are you talking about? What, what? During the competition, right, you're supposed to introduce yourself. You're supposed to say what your name is, where you go to school, how old you are, and what are you going to sing. You had to prove you were above the age threshold. So either she faked documents or she knew someone in the competition who said, nah, it's okay, we'll, we'll let you through. Not only that, but she really didn't do well. Her first song was okay, overly sexualized for an 11 year old. And the second song she sang is so bad, she overbelted a song that was not supposed to be overbelted. So she didn't deserve the win, but the judges gave her the highest score, it was so weird. Most of those people who were in the competition, they hadn't spent time in China going to school like me. They were just so in the Western kind of mentality, they didn't understand that Chinese people just are very amoral. So I told them like, guys, don't get too mad. For many of you, this might be the first time you experienced this, but just know there's a lot of good qualities in Chinese people too. Don't take this as kind of overarching kind of judgment on how the Chinese culture is. A lot of those people were not going to let it through, right? Because they wanted to take part in this prestigious talent competition of overseas Chinese. They just protested. They tried to find who was in charge and went to them like, no, you can't allow this. The people above, I don't know if they knew what was going on, but they saw, well, she had entered the competition and she wasn't supposed to be allowed to enter, but she did enter and the judge gave her the win. So instead of going as a contestant, they just said she can come, but she just performs. She's not going to win any prizes or be officially one of the contestants. And so that angered a lot of the other people that were in the competition too, right? Because in their minds, they're like, oh, it could have been me to compete. She still stole a spot. There's two interesting things to reflect on this. One is just a lot of times in life, like it just isn't fair, right? If, if you know someone, there's some favoritism, then you're just going to get away with more. 
But the second thing, I can never get past that mother, man. That mother of the little girl. Is it the mom that wants it for her daughter more? Does the daughter really want to be quote-unquote famous? I feel like a lot of these moms, they actually ruin their kids. Maybe their kids do have talent. What ends up happening is you mess up your kid. You know, your kid, she's 11, She doing something cheating, basically. She, she's, like, doing something that she's not supposed to. She gets caught in the lie. And, you know, what does they do to an 11-year-old mind, right? A little while later, I, I was taking part in this other festival, and I met one of the judges. And my mom and this judge, and we, we were talking about it. She's like, yeah, dude, I just feel so bad for the little girl. The judge claimed that she didn't know. She claimed she didn't know that um, this girl was underage. She's like, I mean, whatever the case, this is really bad for the little girl because whether she she knew what she was doing was not allowed by the rules of the competition or she went along with her mom or whatever, this is kind of, it leaves a sour taste in her mouth. And who knows what it's gonna do for the future, how she looks upon competitions, how she looks upon singing or performing or being an entertainer. And that mom, man, just, she wouldn't allow her daughter to have fun. She was just getting to the point where she was, all the other contestants were there having fun, helping each other, clapping, like just be like, yeah, and she was telling us to be quiet. It was crazy, man. And I think all these reality TV series of that show that kind of mom, right? The mom that wants their daughters to wear win beauty pageants or wants their daughters to win whatever, be famous, do whatever. I feel like it's a mental illness, man. It's it's not just like an extreme mom. It's literally a mental illness. You don't see the humanity in your kid. You're just seeing a goal or you're seeing a number or something like that. That's the story, man. I never expected to win. I had a lot of fun and I realized, oh, I could kind of play guitar and sing. So that was pretty cool. So that summer, two times afterward, just random events, I would play guitar and sing. <laughs> never took voice lessons, but I wasn't afraid of publicly singing or making a fool of myself that way. And epilogue, I lost touch with all the other contestants. I don't know what happened to them. Last time I checked, none of them went with the entertainment path. I'm probably as close as entertainment as possible out of all those people. That little girl, I forgot her name. I probably purposely forgot her name because I didn't want to be like 10 years later find out, oh yeah, she went all crazy and everything. Maybe I could try to find her see if she went through with her dreams or her mom's dreams of her being famous. <laughs> and they did do this kind of like competition. They were trying to make it go every year. So I don't know if the competition is still going on. It could be, but I don't know what happened to it. And now if you just go to the Olympic Village in Beijing, it's just a really cool tourist destination. But I don't think most of those stadiums and all the different places built for the Olympics in 2008 are gonna really be used for anything but sports events. So that's my story, man. Let me know what you think. Have you guys ever in a competition or anything like this where it's completely rigged from the start? It reflects life, basically. A lot of people complain that life seems to be rigged from the start, right? And whether that's true or not, it's subject to debate. Have you ever had an incident like that where the fact that it was rigged kind of came to light and then some of the people wouldn't take it and try to like, fight the decision and everything. So there we go. I look forward to hearing your comments. Thank you so much, guys. Talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye.